he just called Kerry. So why um, would you say that, I'll, I'll just put it this way, golfers suck. If you think about it, as athletic as the people are playing golf and how we don't see improvement over time with golfers throughout the years, even though as much as we should, even though balls have gotten better, clubs are getting better, people are more in, in shape, but yet we don't see huge handicaps improvements. So why is that? Um, you know, like I, to me, I look at it, we know statistically that golfers, when they begin, have about a two to three year run where they get better and then it's over. They, they reach whatever they got and they're done. Now there may be small incremental great gains that are, are very small, but it really is about it after two to three years. So what does that mean? It means they have used up their athletic talent with a swing that is not good to get as good as they get, could get. So somebody's super athletic, maybe they got down to 78s, okay? But uh, I would bet that person probably shoots a 78 and a 92 every once in a while because they don't understand the swing and they're very handy. Um, so when I go look at any driving range, I drive by one every day um, when I'm working, I probably 20 times and geez, I'm on one end of it. It's, it would be a rare day that I would see somebody practicing correctly. Okay, a very rare day. Um, people don't know how to practice. And, and the ones I do, because I teach them how to, most of them don't want to um, um, do it. And it, you know, it's 15 minutes a day. So why? What is so hard about what my prescription is um, to getting better? Why, why is it that someone wouldn't do it? I, all I ask for is 15 minutes a day of what kind of practice. So let's say you have a takeaway issue, okay? That you are just one that goes like this, but I didn't move anything. I'll say, you know, let's get this line of stick or a TRS like this in there. And I want you to do this until we figure this out. I want you to go here, step to the ball and practice this move. So just here, to the hands or the thighs, and you can see, this is still on me, right? So I use my, I'm gonna shorten this up a little bit, but I use my body to take it away, clubs outside my hands, hands are a little inside, and I've got a great takeaway. I put some pressure down the inside of my trail foot. Is that hard to do? I say 15 minutes a day. When I personally am training for something, I'll do something in reps of like 25 to 52 times a day. Okay, so let's say I do need to train on the takeaway. I would do something like that. It'd be one. So it's slow motion training. Okay, now let's say I want to go a little further and go from here to how do I get to here? I'll do that. But if you notice, what's the speed? And if you notice the other part I'm doing, I'm not hitting any golf balls, okay? So that is huge. I'll just take it from here to here. And then if I want to go further, so that's part of the training, I'm coming up to here. That's it, stopping. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm just working in slow motion here. I'm picking up these new fields. Maybe I want to come back to the ball as part of it. Okay, so I'm doing this for 15 minutes a day. Slow motion moves, that's it, not any ball. For me, I like to do it 25 to 50, the reps, two times a day. Yeah, so that, that works better for me than time because I don't like time because then I sit there and stare at it and go, okay, 15 minutes. Okay, how much did I got in now? Instead of going, okay, I'm going to do 25 of these to here. And what am I doing? I'm retraining my body to a new move. So muscle memory, what is that? <laughs> we don't have middle memory cells inside our muscles. Our brain, we have something called motor patterns that we build from signals sent from our brain telling our muscles what to do, okay? So those are called motor patterns. We don't have anything called muscle memory. So here's the thing, folks, like you can build some great motor patterns that are, can last you your life if you keep moving on them. So like for me, the number one principle I talk to about people is this rotation. How do we move? If you can build a good rotation, I always guarantee people you're gonna have a good swing. Because if I can every time know that I am just gonna wind up really good like this and boom, come through, everything's perfect in my tracer drills and everything, I built a swing to, for life. Because look what I'm, I've already body, I've made it body centered, so then when I pick up a club, I'm just letting this thing kind of follow. 
So, but that takes time. So the quick question or answer to why do golfers suck? They don't practice the right way. And even those that do, they don't, they don't know how to practice. They're exercising out there. Anybody that grabs their seven iron, whatever, and just goes and beats balls, all they're doing is exercising. They're not learning anything. They're actually making themselves worse. Now, if you know what you're doing and you weren't actually working on some move, like I'm showing you in slow-mo, you would spend a lot of time on random practice and not block practice, okay? And check out my blogs and other videos I've done on that. Um, now, why don't people do that one? Because you know what? It doesn't feel as good to do random versus block. So what would random be? I would do a test here on TrackMan. So it had me hit one ball 163 yards, let's say. So I'd grab a club and do it. It'd tell me the next one would be 147 and down to 65. I'm grabbing a different club each time, trying to land it at that distance each time, and I'm getting a score. Penalty, if not, boom, boom. And then what's the other way? I stand with a seven iron. This is what this is typically what I see. Somebody would go like this. Because they don't even watch the ball. I'm looking at raking another one in. Something like that. <laughs> what what does your body know when you do stuff like that? Here's the other thing. If you're if you're if you're just hitting and you're just like here, hit one. Okay, I'm gonna do another. What are you teaching your body? What have you told it to do? It, it, it doesn't even know. You're not you're not sending any signals anywhere saying, hey, I'm trying to accomplish this, okay? You're not going, okay, I'm gonna be up here, and you're not gonna come down in real slow motion to hear impact and say, okay, brain, this is what we're trying to get to, impact. We're trying to get somehow from here to here an impact, okay? If we're not sending these signals, we're not gonna get any better. So just beating balls doesn't make you better. So I hear all the time the person talking about, oh, I got a great range game, and then I go to the course and it stinks. It's like a great range game. You have no penalties. You have this wide range open, and you hit seven iron after seven iron after seven iron or eight iron, whatever it is. You're going to start hitting some good. You're athletic, okay? Challenge yourself. Start building confinements. Tell yourself you got to land in a certain here or there's a little penalty structure. Whatever it is, build it. When are you ever on the course and hitting the same club in a row? that many times. So when I go to the range and I actually do some work on my swing, I treat it like I'm at the, I treat it like I'm playing golf. I'll line up each shot from behind. And, and so what do I do? How many balls do I hit? Maybe 15 to 20. And the same time it takes somebody time to hit a large or a large and a half bucket because I treat each shot like I'm on a course. So guess what? You may hit the ball better than I do in doing that. But you know what? I've built the skills to play on the golf course during my practice. You haven't block practice those no school no skills for it so it's not transferable so we need to do stuff when we're practicing that mimics what we'll do when we play golf like so let's just say this that i know that um i get between clubs sometimes so what do i do um one, one of the things i find out that people do when they get between clubs they're like oh i'm gonna take a little bit off this one and my favorite question is when i add somebody that's they go, darn it, uh, they dug the club into the ground or something like that. I go, what, 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 what were you thinking? They go, oh, I just need to take a little off as between clubs. I go, why would you do that? How often do you ever practice that shot, taking something off a club? They go, oh, never. <laughs> they never go to the range and practice that shot. So what you should do on the course is hit that club as hard as you can, the other one, and be short, okay? Because that's what you do on the range. You don't practice taking off speed. So if I know that I have to take speed off and I have here um, a little pitching wedge and I know what my normal speed is, but I'm going to go do this a little bit different by going just a little like smooth little rhythm like that and go, okay, I just hit that 58 club head speed, you know, carry a 77. Okay. And then I could go, okay, so that was a little, little off speed shot that I'm kind of learning on what, what it's like to do that. Now I'm going to go, Okay, that was a little more. And so now I'm starting to gain this little feeling here, you know, of what I'm doing. 65 yards or 65 club head speed, 101 carry. Okay, so this is stuff you can do to start building up. Because, I mean, this pitching wedge, I care about 135. Okay, so if I just keep going, I'm like, all right, I'm going to go. That was a little little more uh, swing into it. Club head speed went up to 73.6, and I carried it 120. So now what I'm doing is I'm working on feeling different feels in the golf swing, going slower and just trying to feel what it's like and making good solid contact. And you heard one of them I didn't make good contact on, all the others I did. Okay, so now 
I'm going to try to orient myself with this face a little better, okay? So what I'm going to try to do is hit one of them, this next one, off kind of uh, a little bit toey, okay? So I want to come in. So what I would probably do is go like this. Rehearse it. Coming down on the toe, just like that. So I want to try to hit it on toe. This is going to help me orient where the face is at. I mean, that was right off the toe. You know what I mean? If I could feel that ease. And when I look at my track man, it tells me where I hit it. Boom, off the toe. Now, I'm going to do the same thing. Heel. I'm going to line up normal. But heel, I'm going to come in here and go, what's it going to take to do that? Boom. Let's hope. Let's see. I may shank this one, but we'll, we'll see. And I did. <laughs> so I got to the heel. But now I'm orienting myself where that face is at. So think about this. My swing is learning how to do it. Now, did I hit any great shot that I'm like, oh, I feel great about things? Like result? No, but I, you know what I know? I'm learning where this club face is at. Now I'm going to try to see if I can hit the middle. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to go up here. Orient myself. Boom. There it is. And then I'm going to go like this. And I think you can tell, folks, that was right in the middle. <laughs> Boom. Um, so hopefully this helps to change how you practice um, to get better. Because, folks, I see it so many times that golfers can get so much better, and they just don't. And it, it makes me sad. Well, it does, because um, I want to help golfers get better. But this takes discipline. And so my final thought on this is this, is that, I would never show up with um, at, a, at a range to practice without what I'm there for. Meaning there's gonna be a piece of paper or on my phone, I have a note and reminders. Here's what I'm doing today. Okay, I'm gonna work on different swing speeds and I'm gonna, I'm gonna write or I'm gonna check distances with different swing speeds. Really what I'm trying to do is just get a better feel of the body and the, and the, uh, and the uh, club and the connection just with my body. And then the other is I'm going to work today on toe and heel shots and center and just make sure I'm grooving this because I want to be able to feel where it's at, okay, when I'm hitting it and I want to know what the difference is from out here to in here. Um, I'm going to write it down. And then when I finish, I'm going to write, check, check, check. I followed it exactly. I didn't go out to the range like, what am I going to do today? And then here I am. I got my pitching wedge. The first one I hit, I'm like, oh, man. Okay, now I got to just hit this wedge over and over and figure it out. I, I didn't have a plan, right? <laughs> so let's have a plan of what we're going to do. So I know I said finally the last thing. Whatever you're working on, that should be how you start your range session, okay? So if I know my rotation is the biggest thing I need to work on, so guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to start my range session for sure by working on my rotation. Now, if I'm working on it too, I'm doing my rotation between every single shot to build this up, okay? And I'll tell you, most folks out there, need to be doing this drill nonstop. There's so much value to how we move into our trail side, staying on the inside, how we come down and transition, how we end up at impact and forward. So gaining this is what allows me as a golfer to not play in six or eight weeks and go play the course and still play well, because guess what? My body knows how to move. And then I just kind of let the arms follow. It's not a mystery. It's a real mystery when I go like this. And now, this is what I see a lot. People get this position, here they go. They start their swing, clubs out here, we're here. Now I have this fun little swing. What do I do now? <laughs> you know, it's like it's such hard work for people from there. So let's take the mystery out of it. It's actually easier when you do this, folks, but you're going to lose some instant gratification, but who cares? Gratification, nobody cares what you do at the range. You know, it's just build yourself to become a better golfer. You can do it. I want to help. Eric Schulberg, EJS Golf, EJS Golf Academy. Take care.